This is Wild Turkey, and this is Wild Turkey 101, the higher proof version of this. What happens if I distill some of this and use that distillate to raise the ABV of standard Wild Turkey? Can we turn it into 101? Let's find out. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. How's it going chasers? I hope you're having a kick-ass week. I'm Jesse and this is still it. And today, like I said in the intro, we are distilling wild turkey, which is an interesting thing to me because uh, this is obviously a finished commercial aged product that has wood in it. We don't normally distill things that have wood. So what's going to come out the other end of the still? What flavors are going to be amplified? What flavors are going to be held back completely? I just don't know. <laughs> the first question though is, uh, what still am I going to distill this stuff in? I've built up a, a menagerie of stills, to be honest, over the last three or four years, which is great. I'm very lucky to have them. Uh, and it offers me the opportunity to decide exactly what I want to use in this sort of situation. For this, honestly, the biggest limiting factor for me is going to be size. So I know a lot of people consider these sort of relatively budget or mid to budget bourbons, especially in America. Now here in New Zealand, they're not that cheap. So this for me was, over $200 worth of booze all said and done just for this video. I don't want to be distilling a large amount of, of wild turkey. So basically one of these bottles is for blending, one of them is for distilling, this one is for comparing against later on. And that means that I've only got a litre to distill, like the Genio and the, the, the Keg pot still, the Dr. Gratis pot uh, and the Clawhammer pot, they're, they're all just too big, which leaves me really with two options. Here we go guys. Uh, one is the very humble and very easily purchasable air still. These things are freaking everywhere. Uh, and number two is, where have I put it? Hold on. There we go. My uh, little mini stainless steel gas heated pot still. I love this thing. I've used it for gins a whole lot, but it is, it's just kind of a little bit annoying to use. I've got to get out the, the barbecue or a gas burner. It doesn't have O-rings. So I've got to seal it with flour paste. Uh, yeah, I don't think we're going to be using this today, guys. <laughs> although, although, we should probably do another gin in that sometime soon. If you've got a suggestion on a gin, a specific style of gin you want to see, let me know, guys. I'm, I'm down to, to experiment. Anyway, these things, this thing is so freaking simple to run. It has some pretty serious downfalls in terms of the way it can be used and what you would use it for, or what I would suggest you use it for. But what it excels at is doing little uh, test batches pot distilled test batches. So, let's get stuck in, shall we? <laughs> Lid on, and uh, turn it on. While that's heating up, I've got two things I want to do. Number one is, uh, I just want to say, if you're new, welcome to the craft. It's lovely to have you here. I'm not normally distilling commercial booze. We normally make it from scratch around here. Uh, it is an insanely rewarding and fulfilling hobby that the general public has a whole lot of misconceptions about. So if you haven't delved into the world of home distilling yet, don't believe random stuff that you heard from your boss or your sister's boyfriend who heard that her uncle went blight. Don't listen to it. <laughs> if you have questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. I'll hang around and answer questions for the first couple of the days this video goes out. The community at large is wonderfully helpful and friendly. Uh, the other thing I want to do while it's heating up is taste these things. See what we have to work with in terms of the uh, the wash, I guess we're calling it, in the still, uh, and also kind of the target whiskey, which I've, I've got no idea if we're going to be able to get anywhere near this just by raising the ABV of this with that. I guess I should say too, team, if you're actually new to whiskey as a hobby, then uh, double welcome. I know these glasses look kind of wanky to, to people <laughs> that are new to it. They actually really truly change the experience of drinking whiskey. They're called Glen Cans. You can get them all over the place. Uh, if you specifically want the ones that have my logo on it, there's a link in the description down below, or you can go to chasethecraft.com. Actually, let me <laughs> get a glass under there just in case I get carried away with the tasting and things start happening before I'm ready. But very interested to see what comes off the still. But in my mind, I remembered the difference between these two being basically that this was like a more condensed version of this. Thicker, more flavorful, and a little bit more spicy. That's how I remembered it. After tasting them again, those things are kind of true to me. 
but there is a another difference. They both have a decent amount of caramel and vanilla. The thing that I didn't account for and I didn't remember when I was setting this up was that this has the the classic kind of young bourbon wood profile to me. Not, and I'm not saying young isn't a bad thing. I hate it how people equate age to, to goodness. Not at all. It's just, I guess it's a little bit more um, sappy. It's a little bit more green oak. This one is more rounded and deeper and almost sort of heading towards dark fruit a little bit on the oak side of things. I don't know if we're going to be able to replicate that by just bumping the intensity up by bringing the ABV up. Other than that main difference, this is very, very similar to that. And it is just more intense in every way. Hmm. We've just started distillation over here. Uh, so I'll get these out of the way, but I gotta say, man, every time I have wild turkey, I'm always pleasantly surprised, especially in the 101. It's a pretty solid bourbon, especially for the price range it's in. Anyway, distillation is happening. I'm gonna take a very, very small amount of quote unquote heads uh, because, you know, this is a finished product. I don't think we really need to. In fact, oh, wow. Wow, interesting. I need a heart stone. <laughs> We're getting near the end of distillation here. So this is most of what I've taken off the still. Uh, and for those of you that, that don't know, during distillation we get cuts or we get different fractions coming off the still. The easiest way to describe that is that the flavor changes significantly over time. So if you collect into different little parts, you can get different flavors collected into different jars, basically. I haven't really done that. All I've done is uh, collected a small amount of, I guess I'll call it heads, basically. It's just really fiery and doesn't taste great. Uh, and then, a significant part of the hearts up top, which smell pretty damn good, actually. Uh, but I did decide to keep this little bit separate because this tastes a whole lot like and smells a whole lot like that extra spice character in the 101. This is starting to get down towards tails. You know what? I'm going to call it right there. Bam. Done. Tails and distillation when you're distilling from a all grain mash, a corn mash, a, a grain mash, whatever it happens to be, can get really, really funky. They can end up tasting like wet dog and cardboard and straight up like toe jams and BO sometimes. This isn't anywhere near that bad. Uh, it's just starting to lose any real enjoyable flavor. The ABV is starting to drop or the proof starting drop to drop significantly. And it's starting to get a little bit almost cementy, that kind of weird... Uh, I don't know how to describe it. <laughs> I really don't. Uh, wet cement, not not uh, petrichor. Wet cement. I don't like that. So we're going to stop it right here before it gets too nasty. We can blend with these. Right, we can get this measured up and we can start blending things together. I have here 325 mils of uh, the main stuff I'm going to be using. I need my jug though to measure everything else. So that can live in here for now. And that checked out to be 79%. Smelling this tailsy stuff again, I just, it's not worth it, not worth it. Uh, and whatever we do, I can almost guarantee you, we're gonna use all of this. So you know what? Uh, we don't really have any options here. I don't think there's any point making a tincture up. At this point in time, often what I'll do is, you know, blend just 20 or 30 mils or something just to decide exactly what I'm gonna do. But my mind's made up for me, right? I don't want to use all of this because I want to be able to compare it later on. So we'll say, let's do half of it. 500 mils of this, all of this, and enough of this to bring it up to the same proof as the 101. I've just realized that wild turkey is 43.4%. I thought it was 40. This is specifically supplied for Australia and New Zealand though. Maybe that's what I'm confused about. Who knew? 43.4%. <laughs> there you go. 500 mils of standard turkey. Plus all of the delicious spicy cut from the distilled standard wild turkey. And let's just double check what proof this is now with that small adjustment. I need a thermometer to be exact. 47% <laughs> ABV. Uh, let me just do the calculations on exactly how much of this I need to put into that to make it 101 proof or 50.5% ABV. 85 mils, that is not as much as I thought. That is no use to me. Uh, let's use one of these guys instead. 
Man, I'm glad I did the calculations because uh, my intuition told me that I needed a lot more than that. So if I did this just by adding and then measuring and then adding and measuring, I probably would have overshot it right from the beginning. 60, 80, five. I'm gonna let this chill and sort of just marry for a little while. Uh, blending stuff back down like this and, and proofing it down can be really, really tough on the spirit. So I'm gonna let it sit for five hours. It's not really long enough, but dude, I'm impatient and I wanna taste this tonight. <laughs> I'll be back soon, guys. You know what else you could do in five minutes? Build yourself a website with today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace has actually turned into a little bit of a family affair for us. I built chasethecraft.com with it, my sister built her business's website with it, and we both just teamed up together to create Dad a brand new website for Father's Day. Happy Father's Day, Dad. So why did we choose to use Squarespace for all of these websites? Uh, to be honest, it's because we are not web developers. We just want something that is simple, easy, and works. Squarespace makes designing, creating, and updating all of the components on your website easy with its intuitive, what you see is what you get interface. It takes all of the faffing around out of search engine optimization and makes it nice and easy, hassle-free, to get your own sweet domain name. So jump on over to squarespace.com to get a free trial, and when you're ready to launch and go live, don't forget about me, Go to squarespace.com slash stillit to get 10% off your first website or domain. I realize that I am a whole lot more invested in this than I thought I was going to be. <laughs> I thought I wasn't going to care too much, but I'm really excited about how this is going to turn out. So I decided to get Wifey in to taste them <laughs> before I've had a chance to taste them. Put them in order. Start to finish. Yep. Have a taste of everything and then put them in order of what you like from least to most. Good. That's all you need to do to start with. <laughs> <laughs> just wanted to go to bed with my uh, cup of tea. I know, yeah. Once again, team, this is going to take a little bit longer than this video has time for, but the Patreon seemed to enjoy it last time, so I'll put the uh, extended bantering between us uh, over on Patreon. Weird water flavor. This one's good, but it tastes cheap. <laughs> I like this one. It's the best. All right. This is uh, worst through the best for you? Yes. This this has that a weird it smells good. I think it's gonna taste good. You put it on your tongue and it hits your tongue like water. Yeah, it's right. A thing. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. A thing. No, yeah, yeah, I agree. It tricks you into thinking that it's gonna be awesome and then it just kinda of, it's kinda of almost it's like cotton candy, it just vanishes on your tongue. Yeah. This has the like the burny smells good, tastes okay, and then a little bit hit. I don't know if it's high alcohol, but this one's easier. This one's like Stickier, or I don't know what it is. Do I want to take that back? No, 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 no. Yeah, there's, there's no, no I wrong. like this one the best. What is it about it? It smells good, tastes good, easy to drink, doesn't taste cheap, doesn't taste watery. Do you want me to tell you what they are? <laughs> don't know. Okay, sure. so this is the wild turkey standard. Oh, yeah. Out of the bottle. This is the wild turkey 101. Mm. And this. Is is that what you made? Oh, I not well, kind of, but not really. <laughs> this is I took wild turkey uh, and distilled it, hmm. and then blended it back into wild turkey okay. <laughs> to lift the ABV to be the same as this. Okay, cool. It almost seems like a little cocktail or something. I would just like I would drink this easily. Thank you very much, wifey. I appreciate it. I I I can't in good faith agree entirely. I still think this is better, but. I'm really surprised at how close these two ended up being. <laughs> I I was kind of doing this for the for the memes, for the jokes, kind of just to see what happened. I thought it could be kind of interesting to see what flavors come off of the still. I had no idea that that sappy oak was going to be coming out so strong. I had no idea that the the barrel spice was going to come through so strong. And I had no idea that basically fortifying wild turkey with itself was going to bring the experience so much closer to Wild Turkey 101. I completely agree with what Erin was saying, just in terms of these two being more enjoyable to drink, higher proof, there's more to them. They hit your palate and they kind of explode with flavor as opposed to hitting your palate and just kind of fading away into nothingness and then being really sweet and cloying. 
I don't know, man. I think it comes down to a preference thing, but I really do like still that this never gets overly sweet. I, I'm just not into really sweet whiskies. This has less of a sweetness to it. It builds and builds and builds. But then this awesome barrel cooking spice thing takes over and, and brings it back down to almost peppery, almost astringent, but not leaves you lingering on oak and spice. Whereas opposed to this one, which, um, what do we call this? The fortified wild turkey, the, uh, the wilder turkey, the wilder turkey. That's what we should call it. <laughs> the wilder turkey builds and builds and builds. And, and it almost feels like it's going to do the same thing as this, but then it kind of crests over into cloyingly sweet, sweet for a little while before the baking spice takes over. And you're left with more of a sweetness and a caramel and a vanilla rather than a touch of astringency and pepper that this that the, the 101 gives you. Uh, and it leaves you finishing on that slightly green oak flavor that the, uh, the wild turkey gives. Erin's just into that flavor. That's she. That's one of her favorite flavors when it comes to, to whiskeys. So it doesn't surprise me that she likes this one better. I would pick this one. Both are really interesting to drink. Economically, does this make sense? No, I don't think so. Well, I mean, it depends how much each of these bottles cost for you. If you can get this stuff for next to nothing where you are, I mean, then why not? But at the end of the day, no, I don't think this is a uh, something that you're going to be doing to cheat the system and get better wild turkey for cheaper. So I need to say a big, big thank you to the Patreons. It was actually one of the Patreons and a couple of the other viewers as well that, that left sort of similar requests for a video similar to this. And they've all kind of been rolled together into one to create this video. So thank you, Patreons. Uh, and thank you specifically to the Patreon that did ask me to do this. I can't thank you guys enough. So thank you so much. I guess I'm going to bottle this up <laughs> and label it Wilder Turkey. I'll definitely be drinking it, that's for sure. And I'll be enjoying this as well. So if you enjoyed this video, guys, please give me a thumbs up. That actually, that really helps me out a whole lot. YouTube loves that shit. Uh, drop a comment in the comment section down below if you're as surprised as I am that this actually wasn't a complete and utter failure. And, and I'll catch you next time, guys. Keep on chasing the craft. See ya.